Hi everybody, welcome very much to my YouTube channel. It's Trey Clotter for here, ready to start a tarot, astrology, spirituality live stream. And today we are talking about Sun in Leo. No, no, no. Sun in Aries. Moon in Leo. Thank you for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the video, if you enjoy the content here on the channel. And use the links down below to find more of my content and to get a consultation or reading with me to also know about the services use the links down below the link tree is down below as well so welcome to the channel today we have the sun in aries moon in leo so what does that mean mean with the sun in aries since um 27 days so sun in aries aries season almost going away so take these last days to create your new self to create new visions about yourself, to create new imaginations, new motivations, new passions, new aggressiveness, new frustration, to create new personal interests, to create new insecurities, you know what I'm saying? And with the Moon in Leo, we are now feeling a bit more fixed, secure, safe, consistent, stubborn or blocked about those new things. Right? Because we have been doing for the whole month, for the whole 27 days right now, Aries, creating new visions, creating new fires, creating new uh, battles with yourself, with some low normalistic natures, with people around you, with procrastination, with being lazy, with you seeing yourself in a certain way that you don't like to see, you want to achieve a goal, but you feel you can't do it, so you gotta fight against it. Right? Because we have to remember that Aries is ruled by Mars. So it, it always has that fighter energy. Even like people that have Sun, Moon, Rising, um, Mars, or even sometimes Venus in Aries. They might be very chill, but you always feel that competitive energy, fighter energy, right? It's very natural and it's actually pretty good because in reality... Like, we're not fighting against each other, but we are fighting for space. What does that mean? So we are all in this world together as spirits that create bodies and minds to experience, right? And by default, we want to expand. We want to experience more. And we want to experience better. So when it's about time to expand, it's natural that by you expanding, you might collapse or take space that other spirits, that other spaces were into, right? And it's normal that they will offer resistance to you. And it might be opposition, or it might not be opposition. Opposition is more like directed at you. Resistance is just like, hey, you're coming into my space, you're pushing me away, right? So you have to use this energy, this combatant warrior energy, to just be yourself and expand your own ideas, businesses, and well-being in general. Because by you expanding or by you moving into certain places, you have to compete, right, with other spirits. But it's not like, oh, let me defeat this guy. And they are not like, oh, let me take down this motherfucker. No, it's just like, by default, it happens. And that's how you, we come into existence too. Because we got to force existence. Because you are not existing as a spirit. You have no creation. You have no body, no vessel. And you have to force that into existence. So changing, improving, expanding. You got to force it too. Shout out to Archer Uriel. He be saying, this world ain't giving nothing. So you got to take it. And it's not like you're robbing it or stealing it. No, you, you got to take it. You got to go there. Like the cake is on the table. You gotta go and get the cake. You don't need to point a gun to somebody else to give you the cake. You know what I'm saying? So, because a lot of people have been uh, conditioned to be a bit more Venusian, to be a bit more uh, cautious, to be a bit more uh, gullible, right? And that's really not the right way to be yourself mostly we're talking here about in general terms right because if you want to succeed in area in any area you need this competitive energy right so with the moon in leo you can positively 
feel confident about that. Yeah, I deserve that. I deserve to go and be competitive and take that energy. Or negatively, you might do too much. Why? Because the sun rules Leo and the sun is exalted in Aries. So you might be ego. You might not be taking with yours, you might not be expanding, you might be literally taking somebody down, you might be pushing them down, or yourself down, that's the worst case scenario, and then with the moon in Leo, you either confirm yourself, or you attract scenarios, people, things from the internet, things that you listen, a memory, because the moon is about attraction, right, that confirms that, that gives fixation and solidification to those new images, right? So, first and foremost, whatever is happening in your life, use this gift, this trine in the sky, sun in Aries, moon in Leo, to create a new, stronger confidence and image about yourself. You might be, throughout these, seven, these 27 days, with the sun in Aries, you might be fighting with yourself, you have this image, or you want to look this way, and look not just physically, like your body, but... You want to see yourself as successful. You want to see yourself as capable. You want to see yourself as valuable, funny, whatever it is. But maybe you weren't always like back and forth with that, right? You were not sure. The world was telling you no and you're kind of in the fence, right? Now with the, moon in, with the moon in Leo, make sure you confirm that good, positive. It can be negative. It can be a negative vision about yourself if that makes you on your track, on your spiritual path of expanding, being your goddamn self, believing in all possibilities, creating new visions and new imaginations. Because you know you, you are in hell or somebody's in hell. You know when you and somebody else is being a demon when they reject all possibilities. And one thing is being realistic. Another thing is, being, is denying all possibilities. But there is a thin line between that. And some mostly earth signs, Virgos, sometimes Aquarius too, I speak for myself, we can be like that. And especially the Aquariuses have a very easy time manifesting that denial of all possibilities. Aquarius sometimes think they're really smart because they predict what's going on. And it's not. They just got so fixed on an idea, a negative idea, away from all possibilities, that that shit happens and be like, oh, I told you so. Right? Like they think that something different will not happen. They think the usual will repeat or the negative circumstance will repeat and then it happens. Yet you helped it happen right now. You with your fixed air energy got into that business and made it come true, right? So being realistic and denying all possibilities are different, but they're very, they're, they're esoteric neighbors, right? Because for us to be realistic, to be real, to exist in this reality, we, we had to choose specific outcomes, specific possibilities, signs and symbols, shapes and forms, frequencies and vibrations. Like, you, you don't have every color in you. You don't have every single frequency and vibration in you. you. You don't have all possibilities within you. And that's one of our major goals as spirits in this lifetime is to take our creations, our minds and bodies... To a space where there is more possibilities so you can experience more and better in a more consistent and safe way because as a spirit or as a loose mind a loose awareness things can be too chaotic and predict unpredictable and then you can't have a valuable experience that's why many many people including the masons and they and the jesuits all quote in quotes all right they have i'm pretty sure they call themselves another name but and you see that throughout movies and even in certain documents, they are afraid of chaos. That's why they want to make order out of chaos. Because in the first place, that's what you did when you made the body and the mind. You make order out of chaos. Right? We have, a, we, we have measurements. We have the Fibonacci, the Fibonacci sequence within us. So we took chaos, a lot of spirits hanging around. Me, nothing. Just hanging around. Right? And we gave them order. That's why... In the military and shit like that, you give an order, you you give an intent, you give a purpose, an order, right? An order of things. One, two, three, that's the order. First, second, third, that's an order, right? So, but then most of these people that are in positions of power or government and stuff like that, they are into spirituality. They might be into the wrong part of spirituality, 
but they know way more about the spirit and the subconscious realm than the normal Joe. And then the normal Joe be making fun of astrologers and tarot readers. And that's also because a lot of astrologers and tarot readers go out into the fake side and, and they, they're getting what they deserve, right? That's why I'm here to bring reality back into spirituality because once upon a time we were all spirits and then we made reality. But the reality separated too much from spirituality and I'm here to bring that back. But not like it used to be, in a new way, a new time, a new way, you better believe it, Sun in Aries, Moon in Leo, but yeah, they know whoever, whoever is in power, because also another thing, just to finish this point, there is not one person or one group in power in charge of the whole world, that doesn't make sense, just like the Christian God or one God being responsible for all the people down here and animals and all the shit, it doesn't make sense, one being only has a certain amount of power, right? That's why we grow and expand. So one being being responsible for all the shit down here doesn't make sense. One being or one group of people being responsible for the whole world doesn't make sense, right? So they know also that teamwork makes a dream work. So they together and they have affiliations and associations, right? And they have different uh, groups over here uh, studying the land, studying the desires studying the needs of the people so they can be in power how how they are in power they study they do just that and then they create the solution or the problem or the connection with the solution or with the problem and people need them or their products or their ideologies and guess what you can do the same you should do the same you should do the same you should have an idea a product a movie a a, a song, a game, a way to play a game, a way to live life, uh, a way to be a bartender that nobody can be, and then you make others need you. Oh, you want to have the most people in your bar? You want to have a profitable night every night the bar is open? You need me. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't need to be like in charge of the government and shit like that, right? You don't need to do that. Like there is this Perspective people think they need to be at the top of the food chain. No, being at the top of the food chain, actual of the food chain, quote unquote, can actually uh, put you away from what you need to experience as individually, right? As a spirit, you you might not need those responsibilities. You might not need to be in charge of a group, a large group of people, right? But you gotta be in charge of your own life. If you can govern yourself, if you can govern your house. Though they know better than you. You know what I'm saying? But they know about spirituality. They might have most things lost in oral tradition and tra uh, transcript text. But they know certain stuff. They know about the desires. They know about certain allegories. They know how, how to use symbolism, right? Because basically everything is symbolism. Our body is a symbol of your spiritual nature, of your mental health, right? Your skin is a symbol of how your spirit is doing, but that's for another video. So all these people in power, either they know something or they are under somebody that knows something or they think they know something, right? But in the end of the day, they have an outdated, very outdated, even because most times it's not even a, spir a spiritual a um, mechanism is re a religious mechanism, right? And that is really, really outdated and it doesn't make sense. And that's why you see all these crazy things happening right now because they are basically trying to keep control, trying to keep people interested in their own cycle, right? And uh, just to be very, very clear as well, I have nothing against the government. We need some type of government, but not in the way that it's been done. We need infrastructure. We need certain regulations. And by the way, to all the people that hate on the government, do you know why we need regulations? Because back in the day, the normal Joes were fucking each other, cheating each other. Not fucking, not in the physical sense, but... A, a, a normal ass Joe was a bit smarter than all the Joes in the town. They were taking advantage of them. They they found a way to make more bread without working so much or without using so much resources. But it hurts everybody else. They don't care. That's why we need regulations. That's why we need 
certain things to make sure that the normal Joes don't fuck up each other. But why do you think that came to be? Because back in the day, people were doing that to each other, right? Like, everything you are experiencing right now, as in societal things, came from a, a long time of build-up, right? So, like, basically, we are getting, we are uh, harvesting what we sew, what we, I don't know if that's the right term, what we planted, right? And perhaps you were one of, was one of the spirits back in the day. Because most likely, if you if you you are not naturally attracted to spirituality, astrology, and tarot, most likely not only you had a lot of previous lives. I have some previous lives down here, not a lot, I don't know, but I I have some ideas of where I was back in the day. But perhaps you were one of, and most likely, like if you are into spirituality and shit, most likely you lived in the time of Jesus, right? Because Jesus didn't exist, Jesus is a title, is a representation, but throughout history there were people that could could be called Jesus, right? There was not one Jesus, right? But the Bible speaks about G like Jesus as in a type, as in archetype. Imagine when you do something that you can be, that many people can be called that thing, like you a baller, you play very good basketball, you a baller. That it's not about one guy named Baller, right? It's about some a lot of people that play good ball, they ballers, right? A thief. A thief, it's not one guy named Thief, it's everybody, somebody, thief, something, everybody, anybody steals something, they a thief, they're not the thief, they a thief. So we're not talking about the Jesus, there was not one guy named Jesus, there was a type of person, a characteristic, and they were calling that Jesus. Jesus. You know what I'm saying? The same thing with God. God is just a title for when a spirit is creating something on its higher nature. God looked at it after it created, and it was good. That You better believe it. You, you, you looked at something you created, it wasn't shit. A demon. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, wait a minute, something ain't right. There you go, painting, stay, stay, stay there, brother. By the way, if you guys want paintings, you can check my Instagram, we have some paintings posted there, and if you want a painting made for yourself, you can call, uh, always give me the idea, and we will arrange that. So, I was rambling too much, guys. My bad. Like, I expressed these spiritual concepts to you, right? And how, how we even started on this uh, train of thought? We were in real shit, right? We were in Moon and Leo. No, we were in Moon and Leo. Confirming, solidifying. Oh, yeah. Solidifying your new creations. Because you might be... Oh, I got it. So, sometimes you need a negative vision of yourself. Because... You were being too lazy, you were procrastinating too much, you were postponing too much, and you gotta create that new vision, like, I ain't shit, I better be some shit. I don't know how I connected that to the government, and them being spiritual and whatnot, maybe there was some type of allegory that I used, but it doesn't matter. What it matters is that it's time to be more fixed, situated, and structured about how you feel about the new visions and passions, new aggressiveness and frustration that you have created through every season. Because three days to go, and today the sun is in the 27th degree. So it's time to elevate to plus seven, nine. It's time to elevate, get from one place and go to a better, higher, more expanded perspective by creating new visions, new passions, new motivations, new frustrations and new anger. You know what I'm saying? Because, bro, hate is not what you think it is. Shout out to Ahijan Uriel once again. Hate is necessary. And a lot of people have a bad perspective on hate, but hate is how you bounce back. Hate is how you... Per because you don't need to hate somebody. And this is, uh, again, touching a little bit or coming back to what we're saying. Hate is not like you hating a person specifically. That's bad. But hating how they're doing something. Don't, don't hate the person. Hate... 
what they following, hate the nature they uh, representing, hate the pattern, hate that they are categorizing you in a certain way that you don't identify yourself with. And we need that hate, right? H-I-T-E, to not only shield yourself, but to separate yourself. So you're not associated. Because if you associate yourself with these visions that these random people in our life, because your, your, ma your, your mother, your grandmother, they can be randos. They can be randoms in your life. Right? If, you, if they don't share spiritual belief systems, if they don't share the, the, the desire to grow and expand and be a real motherfucker, be a random pe person in your life. You, you just use them as a vehicle to get down here. You know what I'm saying? Bro, it, it is what it is. You're not the body, you're not the flesh, you're not the blood. So why, sh why should that uh, a connection be the most important? You know what I'm saying? You the fucking spirit. So find yourself some spiritual connection. Now, don't treat your mother like shit. They're not the demon. They're not holding you back. No. You accepting those things. You associating yourself with those things. Right? So, Sun in Aries, create a new perspective of yourself. Create a new vision. And be like, separate from them. But you don't need to hurt them. You don't need to bash on them. You, you can still chill with them. You can still be with them. You can still be a part of the family without being super associated with them, right? So, just to conclude, Sun in Aries, Moon in Leo, but, and why I'm, why I'm repeating this so much? Because it's really important. And this will take us into a Sun in Taurus. Because then Moon goes into Virgo. And, oh, if you didn't confirm that good, positive, new, expensive image about yourself, and you let the Moon slide into Virgo, Bro, you're going to be criticizing yourself. You're going to be criticized by everybody else. You're going to be nervous, insecure, paranoid, all that shit. It, bro, it's Virgo, mutable earth. You're going to be associating that reality, that circumstance, that responsibility, that organization, because you didn't solidify the passion and the motivation right now. Look, you might not be in a good position. You might not have a good reality, finance, finances, whatever. But if you are today, this is not Aries season, blah, blah, blah. No, it's today, today, sun in Aries, moon in Leo. If you are firming, firmingly condensing, fixing that feeling, that passion, that desire to achieve more and be more and be better, at whatever you do or in a new area, your situation will improve by default. There is no escape on that. But you got to do it through affirmations, through imagination, through actually doing it, through going against negative feedback from yourself or the, the, the external world. But keep it cute. Keep it cute. Just protect yourself. Don't attack others. You know what I'm saying? That's what Jesus means when he gives the other face. Somebody slaps him. And by him giving the other face, he's basically confirming like, oh, you being demonic. Because not only you hit me twice, you hit me once. Now, I'm giving you the opportunity to confirm your, uh, you being a demon. I'm giving you the opportunity to confirm that you did it wrong. And then people will not most times. Right? Because doing that first demonic action... They, they spirits too. They can be angels too. So when they be aggressive to you and you protect yourself and then sit back, you're like, oh shit, I messed up. If not, obliterate them. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I give you the other face. Now you now you catch these bullets. Turning the other cheek. Yeah, turning the other cheek. Not, not them cheeks. These cheeks. You know what I'm saying? So, um, bro, and that's how you have to read the Bible, bro. You, you have to read the Bible as in like, what you be doing with homeboy down there? What you been doing with homegirl and shit like that? What you be doing like your boss treating you like shit? You give him the other cheek. You know what I'm saying? He hits you again. First, he 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 confirmed he's a demon. He knows he's a demon. You know he, he's a demon. Now now you super free to go find another job, feel a complaint, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's it, bro. That's it. It's no. 
Jesus, the dude that walked on water and turned water into wine. What, what, what does it mean when a Jesus turns water into wine? Right? So water, right? Your emotions and feelings. And what is one of the main characteristics of water? No flavor, no color, no smell. So when you are on your high horse, when you are confident, when you believe in yourself and in all possibilities, you can take your emotions and make them something good that tastes good and makes you feel good and makes you high. And usually when you drunk, when you drink wine, you feel good, you feel connected, you want to dance, you want to talk, you want to open up and release your emotions, sometimes crying and shit, right? So when Jesus turns water into wine, that means you being a Jesus, not the dude 2,000 years ago, you being a Jesus took certain emotions and feelings and make them good, tasty. You can get high on them. You can feel real good on your own emotions, on your own feelings. Somebody else had a bad day. You become a Jesus or you teach them how to be a Jesus. You, they turn those waters into wine. Now they're laughing. They're feeling good. They're realizing how strong they were. They're realizing how bullshit their boss is. And, they do, and they, actually they're on the right side. That's it. It's not real water into wine, you motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of water, let's drink some water. Bora or water? Or, just thought about it, that actually turning water into wine is how you make the flesh. If your spirit is being a Jesus, it's in a space, in a vibe, where it's good, confident, shining, creating light, creating fire, creating the excitement, then the, 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 the creation, the fluid, the thing that it creates turns into wine, turns into blood, into flesh, the daughters of men, men, the thought, the mind, or the first creation of the spirit, then they condense with each other, they connect with each other, they create more and more and more, and now you have the tissue, you have a, a physical vessel, because matter is condensed light, the spirit first is no thing, no shape and form, it, it gets itself excited, it creates light or spark or fire or a because I, I don't want, I don't want to call liquid because liquid is already a physical representation so it's not a liquid but it's something that has the the current the current critics of liquid why you think life comes out of water and why, why you think our planet is 70 percent water why you think you 70 70 percent water because all your spirits within you are creating that shit it's one of the first things, but not water as in real water. But it's water-like. It has those characteristics. It's fluid. It can change the form. It can change the shape. You know what I'm saying? So, when you are a Jesus, when your spirit is in a good mood, it will create blood, flesh, tissue. So, the, I was talking about that on the other day. When your spirit is having a good experience, you age slower... You age better, you don't have so many body and mental issues. When you're not having a fulfilled experiment, you're 20 and you look 30. There is no other way than that. Oh, but it's about genes and stuff like that. Yes. Yes, you created those genes. I don't like when people talk about genes as in, oh, you got lucky, it was a coincidence, your fathers gave you good genes, your parents gave you good genes. No. You created those genes and you have to activate those genes. Because uh, some time ago, scientists discovered that what they call junk DNA, it's not junk, it's actually useful, but it needs to be activated. Search that online, it's true, bro. I came from science, I know. I, I know, I, I'm not, I know scientists, but I will be a mentalist, I'm, I'm a spiritualist. You know what I'm saying? So I know some science, you know, so... You, even if you have these good looks, it means that you activated those genes as a spirit. You created those genes and you acted those genes out, right? If you got good health, by default, it's not by default. You made it that way and you uphold that state. 
right? Because you can be healthy today and not be, and you're not healthier tomorrow. You're not healthy tomorrow. So if you you have a prolonged state of health, you are, you're maintaining that. You you are you are repeating that pattern that leads you to be healthy. So it's not just the genes, because I hate when people like. I hate when people say that. Like I give this example: two people smoke, one has cancer, the other don't. The other doesn't. And people be like, oh, because of their genes. Oh, you know, one has good genes, the other has bad genes. What the fuck is that, bro? That's no knowledge, no wisdom, no science, no spirituality, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I refuse that. I, I, bro, I refused that type of, uh, oh, I don't know, so whatever. Bro, no, I, bro, come on. If you don't know, you, you better go and know that shit. You better... If nobody created an answer, you, sh you you better create an answer. I'm not saying for you to tell me the right answer, but if you don't know, who told you not know? Create an answer. Create knowledge. Create something. Bro, I'm not telling you to be the no next Nobel Prize. Just create something. Like, you know what I'm saying? And saying, oh, it's just good genes. It's just luck. Bro, no, fuck that shit. It doesn't work like that. Right? Uh, okay, you have good genes. Good genes, quote unquote. So that means that you you, you didn't got cancer because of your good genes, and that person got got cancer because they had bad genes. No, come on, bro. No, it's because one person was using the smoke in the right way. They were fulfilling themselves. The other person didn't need to be smoking, or they were smoking because they were nervous, or because they were worried, or they were running away from something. And then those bad genes were created in that way. You better, it's, that, that's how it works. You are the spirit, you are the creator, and everything comes from the spirit. Everything. So if you are the spirit, you can create it and you can change it too. There is no other way than that. Today you cut, you cut your bangs for this Leo moon for newfound confidence. Real shit, actually cutting the hair. It, it, it's basic, because what is your hair, physically speaking? Is the accumulation of dead blood cells. So your hair is the accumulation of past experiences, right? That's why a lot of people, when they want to change, when they are really tired of a situation, they cut their hair or they dye their hair. Because that is a spiritual ritual, a, a deep one, to symbolize change. Bro, don't be saying this on Aquarius Moon, Sun Rising, Uranus, Saturn, or Mercury. Bro, the Aquarius be always changing their hair when they want they want to change. Oh, they feel a bit rebellious. Oh, they changed. The, the, now the hair is green. Oh, they, they, they tired of their uh, relationship. Now they bald. They 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 cut the, all their hair. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, uh, cutting hair, especially when you have very long hair or you have uh, bangs or rasta. Right, and you cut them, it's a, it's a sign of release. And why, like, these men from tribes, men from the jungle and shit like that, they usually grow very long uh, ponytails, for example, or Indian men from North America, to represent their wisdom. I think it was in the Viking culture, I'm not sure though, but the men used to grow huge braids. And when they fight, like a real fight, the loser would cut their braids. Because basically it's like, oh, what you have been done so far wasn't good enough. You lost the fight because the gods, the spirit wasn't within you. You were not being yourself. You were out of your way. So cut your hair. Don't give a shit about what you built right now. Start building new and better. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And, and it doesn't go further than that. Bro, spirituality is reality. Spirituality is physicality. Your body comes from the spirit, you know what I'm saying? But, been talking for 36 minutes, feels good, let's go take a tarot card for today's energy, remember, if you want a tarot card for yourself, say so in the chat, if you want a reading for yourself, uh, use the links on below to find my link tree, to find my IG, my Discord, and my email to contact me. So, Sun in Leo, Moon in Leo in 2024, 2024, you know what I'm saying? There we go. Tarot card for today. Reverse lovers. Reverse Gemini. So 
you are finding value in yourself, in the world, you want to connect with yourself in the world, you want to expand, you want to show, you want to be seen, you want to pay attention to others and all that shit, but it's in reverse. So you and others might be misunderstanding what you want to show, what you want to relate, or how you are relating, or that maybe you are relating too much, maybe you are relating and it's good, you, you're feeling confident about your new visions, you want to show that, you want to express that, maybe you're going too much, maybe you're with the wrong audience, maybe you should have that one minute ago, or you should have stopped one minute ago, but with doing the right thing, Gemini lovers, with what is Gemini? Mutable air, associating your speech, associating your ideas, that audience is a bit more logical, let me be a bit more logical. That audience is a bit more spiritual, let me be a bit more spiritual. Maybe you're doing that too much. Maybe you're changing, you're being too much of a chameleon with your ideas and you need to be more original, to be more fixed and straight to the point. You know what I'm saying? Let's pull a card for the King Go, King, the King Go Nathaniel. Let me just take a, a Dragon Oracle card here for today's energy. So how to correct that misunderstanding how to use Sun in Leo, Sun in Aries. Bro, Leo always trying to get the spotlight. Bro, it's Moon in Leo, Sun in Aries. Moon, not the Sun. Today, Leos, today you're reflecting. Today you're receiving. Today you're listening to the story. You're not telling the story today. You're not the main star today. You're receiving. You're supporting. You're clapping. You're paying for the gig. You know what I'm saying? But hey, without you, there was no show as well. Just remember that, just remember that, all right? There we go. So, Green Dragon, Green Dragon, how to use Sunny Nerys Moon in Leo to reach all possibilities in a fastest, in a fast and efficient way? Remind yourself of your value. Remind yourself of abundance that you can do, you can grow, you can plant seeds, go look outside, see how much life this world is harboring. Bro, look within you. How much life is you are bringing? You know how many cells you got within you? When you take a shit, you know how many cells just died that were within you? You know how, how much life is within you? Remember about that. Remember about your power to hold life, to be life, to create. Remember your value. Remember to feel good, to take care of yourself. And to all believe, always believe in all possibilities. So let, let's take a card for Nathaniel here. Let's see, for the Sun in Aries and Moon in Leo in 2024, there, oh, oh, there we go, Five of Pentacles, so that means you are creating, a, you are, might be already doing so, or you want slash need to create a more emotional connection, or to be a bit more attached or care a bit more about a physical circumstance, a limit, a boundary, a status, or maybe you are already too much attached to something that you think you need, as in security or looking a certain way to others, and then you don't necessarily need to do so, right? You need to feel safe, yes, you need to feel secure, you need to feel like you're progressing, but maybe you think you need to stay too close or spend more time, uh, it, now you need to apply this to your life, right? But in general, this card means an emotional connection to reality, to, to physicality, an attachment to a circumstance, a limit, boundary, or responsibility. All right. So, let's do a quick astral reading for today. Real quick. Sunny Aries, creating new ways to see yourself creating new actions and expressions that come from new passions, motivation, anger and frustration, mostly related with your personal interests and personal insecurities. Moon Leo, feeling more confident, feeling more stubborn and more fixed in your visions, feelings, illusions, imaginations, spiritual belief systems and reflecting on your actions and expressions and how you see yourselves and how you think others see you. Right? Mercury, I, we can do with the degrees. Mercury in Aries retrograde, thinking about past times, situations, or conversations where you had to initiate new conversations or new ideas about individuality, 
something new, something real, aggressive or spiritual, right? And it's in 18 degrees, so you're spending a lot of time in your own individual space in that area. Just to come back a little bit, sun in Aries 27 degrees, relating about detachment or thinking about detachment or relating to new spaces, looking into new spaces. Uh, Moon in Leo, we're not talking about the degrees because it moves really fast. Sun, um, Venus in Aries in 14 degrees, relating in more passionate and aggressive ways or wanting to find real, unique love or relating in more spiritual and expressive ways and it's 14 degrees energy number five being more individual about your mind being more unique about how you analyze your surroundings so that means you're taking it more personal so it becomes more emotional and more attachment right mars in pisces 19 degrees being more passionate aggressive frustrated or having more desire when it comes to spirituality deep emotional connections deep creativity or just feeling good and connected with yourself and the world in general. And it's 1 plus 9, right? So it's 10, energy number 10. So it means you, you're being very individual and very unique about ascending, about expanding, right? And after you use all that energy, after you use all that excitement, then you need to rest and fall down a little bit. That's why the number 10 energy most times represents falling down, or slowing down because the number nine energy is that movement, right? You go up and then you stay there and you calm down. And it's not literally falling from that current position. It's like you use all your energy to go up, right? And now you just come a bit down and to rest a little bit. It doesn't mean you go fall. You fell as in rhythm, as in the energy, as in the proportionary force, right? But you stay in that high position so you can rise again. You know what I'm saying? Then, Jupiter, 20 degrees Taurus is going fast. Jupiter is moving fast here, all right, all right? Expanding in your own fixed way to make sense, be secure, safe, realistic, and profitable, right? And profitable is not exclusive to money or success. It can be emotionally, through love, through... Uh, Making things on time, making things good, make it, making things well, right? So 20 degrees means that you are relating or you want to conversate about new things or in new ways. Or you want to relate with new people or with people that make you feel fresh or that give you the opportunity to expand about your physical fixed circumstances. Saturn, 15 degrees Pisces, more spiritual reality. Spirituality, dreams and illusions being a part of reality, being a part of the world, uh, spiritual connections, spiritual teamwork, and it's 15 degrees. So energy number six, right? Bring more authority, attention, and control over those circumstances. And it's one plus five. So it's you being more unique and more individual about the emotions and feelings about receiving spiritual input from reality. Be careful with that. Don't go crazy on everybody else's world right? Uranus, 21 degrees Taurus. Uranus in Taurus, by default, changing and rebelling when it comes to fixed circumstances or ways to make sense, be stable, safe, secure, private, and profitable. And it's two plus one, number three energy, being more aware of those things by relating to, with, or about more unique and individual circumstances, people, places, things, or scenarios. Neptune in Pisces, grand illusions and grand imaginations, 28 degrees, almost going into Aries, right? So relating about deep stuff or spending a lot of time thinking about relating and conversating or spending a lot of time conversating and relating or spending or relating in a deep way or with deep relationships about those great delusions and illusions and wisdoms and knowledges. Pluto moved into two degrees Aquarius, starting to relate starting to see think things happening on outside when it comes to transforming yourself the world and others by being or towards being and having your own fixed mind and fixed and original way to think communicate and analyze right and now real quick moon in leo through the houses if you have moon in leo in your first house it means that you're feeling more confident 
more stubborn or you need to be validated or you already are so you're feeling good about your personal interests and personal insecurities on your personal life in general you in leo in your second house you're going through a learning process here learning how to feel more uplifted uplifted more confident and more validated on your values and how you value others moon in leo in the third house attracting people in your surroundings that want your attention or feeling like you should receive attention from the surroundings moon in leo in the fourth house being exposed or exposing others in your private space or in their private spaces or just having a good time having a party in your personal emotions or personal space moon in leo in the fifth house, it's a party day. It can be a party, a clown fiesta, a shit party, but you're attracting more things that deal with entertainment and receiving attention, or you're receiving, uh, attracting a lot of people that they think you should give them attention, or you think you should give them attention, or you think they should give attention to you, or they think they should give you attention. It's like that, it's because it, it's the same energy, right? So it, it might create friction, or it just might be like more cake is good or too, too much cake makes my, my belly hurt. You know what I'm saying? Moon and Leo in the sixth house feeling a bit more confident and happy or feeling stubborn and too uh, excited or too nervous about routine, pattern, work, organization and health or feeling exposed in those areas as well. Moon and Leo in your seventh house feeling the need to be the center of your relationships or being a spiritual uplifting support to your relationships or thinking slash feeling that your relationships should give you emotional upliftment and making you feel slash look good type of um uh, support or if you're planting good seeds already feeling real good happy validated, taken care of, and loved by your relationships. Moon in Leo in the 8th house, feeling more uplifted, receiving more attention, and feeling exposed about, or feeling exposed about your deep desires, deep passions, motivations, anger, and frustrations, and manifesting, attracting people that can see the value and the intention behind your values, or seeing people that want to uncover something that is private within you. Moon in Leo in the ninth house, feeling more confident, more structured, or more stubborn about spiritual belief systems, your testimonies, or just your own way to associate your imaginations and feelings with everybody around you. Moon in Leo in the tenth house, creating new ways to be responsible and limit yourself about entertainment or uh, ways to receive or pay attention to others, or just seeing the reality in entertainment or something might be receiving a lot of attention and you see, hey, oh, wait a minute. Or you're like, oh yeah, that's why, because they're working in this, they're making this go that way. Yeah, makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Moon in Leo in the, in the 11th house, that's my way, feeling the need to expose something out in the world, you know, receiving attention from through social media, being seen through social media or attracting people to your platform and your platform doesn't necessarily mean YouTube or IG or Twitch it might you might have a platform because it's 11,000 so Aquarius and what is a platform is something that exposes content or, or something sits on the platform so you can be your own platform like I have an Aquarius tell him I'm known for talking a lot moving my hands a lot being rebellious being harsh and the actually being a very protective friend, for an example. So I'm my own platform. People know me for a certain reason. And people expect a certain content coming out from me. Right? So with the moon in Leo, it can be me attracting people to my platform as in YouTube. Or me attracting people that might not necessarily agree with me. But me showing them a different way. Me showing them a different feeling, a different vibe, even if they don't agree with me, they will, feel, they will feel a little bit better because I'm showing more possibilities. I'm showing the other side. So perhaps they're feeling... St I was talking about this another day too. People that, that are like deep into science, deep into medicine and shit like that. 
they get a little bit happy when they see people going against them because their spirit knows there is something more and that person is showing them the other side of the river, the other side of all possibilities. You know what I'm saying? For you, it's the 10th house. So yeah, so you might be attracting people uh, to your business or to your routine or to your stability that need attention. Or like I said, you, you might be seeing the reason why something is receiving attention. And you might be like, oh, that's fake as fuck. Or you might be like, I see why that makes sense. Because they're working like that. They're building like this. And that makes people pay attention to that. Or you're like, nah, that's a load of crap. Wait a minute. That, that ain't right. That ain't right. But with the moon in Leo in the 11th house, just to finish the business here. Yeah, attracting people to your platform or feeling more balanced, feeling more uh, excited, creative spiritual about sharing stuff to the world and that's really good for me because i have that aquarius stellium i have the ability i have the gift to talk and express things to the world but i might be too serious i might be too repetitive i might be too dry so with the moon in leo i got that fire i got that juice i got that light i can make myself feel good and it can make y'all feel good while making sense while being real while being my goddamn self bro it's that liberalizing Bringing that balance to the world. You know what I'm saying? Moon and Leo in the 12th house. Shit show. All the demons. Like you the light. All the demons are the moths. They coming to you in every angle. Guess what? Just like Luluid Stitch. You can find a house to them. You can find a place. Oh, so many demons. No. So many workers. So many clients. So many ideas. So many dollars, you know what I'm saying? If you're a powerful spirit, if you're a weak spirit, ah, oh, the voices, the voices, I can handle them. Oh, the criticism, oh, they're looking at me, oh, they want to take me down. If you're a strong spirit, oh, so many stories, so many movies, so many books, so many dollars, you know what I'm saying? Dollars, dolls, use them, play them, you know what I'm saying? But in a more serious way, I gotta go, I, bro, I'm Saturn, 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 Uranus, Mercury energy, goddamn Aquarius fix there. You gotta make some sense, you gotta be some, you gotta be serious, you know what I'm saying? So, Moon in Leo in your 12th house, it means that you, are, you might be attracting, like, for example, 3rd house, you're attracting people from your surroundings. 12th house, you're attracting people, bugs, thoughts feelings, best moments, best life moments. I don't know, bro. Your mama's demons, your mama's partners. Bro, you can be attracting everything if they need attention, if they need validation, if they think they deserve to be treated better and be justified, they, they be coming to you. So now you should be hating that and protect that shit and put that, that a barrier up so they can touch you. You know what I'm saying? And then you you be like uh, uh, you allow certain of those spirits to come in to work with you to work for you. So then you can create a light in the esoteric realm, right? So others can see and come to the show and pay the ticket. You know what I'm saying? Also, so they come to you, they want to be validated or share spaces with you. Okay, give me some energy, give me some excitement, give me some stories feelings, emotions, something that I can use to know more about spirituality, to know more about myself, to know more about the world, to know more about you, to know more about how people do this over here, over there, because the 12th house, like I usually say, it's the house, it's the death house, also, many people, when they have near-death experiences, and it's even a joke, right, when you're about to die, you see all your life going through your eyes, and that's a 12th house, in the 12th house, or when the sun is in your 12th house, when the moon is on your, in your 12th house, you can see all other areas of your life coming together. And if you if you're a smart spirit, it makes sense. If you're a dumb spirit, it's just too overwhelming and you go to Dalal and now you lost your crazy cat um, auntie. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, moon in Leo in the 11th house, feeling more shysty, more confident, or more stubborn about spiritual visions, spiritual feelings, or others, um, whatever they bring to you, you might feel too shysty, too stubborn, or too attached 
to whatever other is bringing to your life. You know what I'm saying? So, it will be everything for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Remember to book a consultation, a tarot, natal chart reading. I have various types of readings. You can just, I can give you a reading and then you give me whatever you want, right? Imagine you're not sure. You might have a lot of bills to pay this month. You cut your car might need to go to the shop, you, 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 you contact me and you say, I want a donation reading. So you get the reading and then you give me whatever you can, right? Don't expect like to me for me to be two hours talking like it normally is, but it will be good. It was, it is always good. Okay. I have Virgo North Node in the 12th house and I got Pisces in the 6th house. I make sure to the, to make a good work that is spiritual and I make sure to bring purpose to my routines and patterns. I make sure to make sense out of spirituality and the subconscious realm, and I make sure to be responsible about these type of services, about psychic services. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm here to do. That's what I'm here to learn. North of Virgo, 12 hours. You know what I'm saying? So thank you for watching. I wish you the best thoughts, ideas, feelings, and emotions. A whole bunch of individuality, creativity and responsibility as well and just notice that what i usually say me bring reality back into spirituality that's so much a virgo north node in the 12th house thing to say virgo reality into the 12th house the spirituality you know what i'm saying so always remember to believe in your goddamn self always remember to believe in all possibilities and always remember it's not what you do it's how you do it and the best way to be is to be your goddamn self. Until the next time, this is Eric Lauter for stepping out. Check the other videos, and I'm out. Enjoy yourself.